What is up, folks? NYKF31 here. Madden 16 video, Draft Champions ranked game, Draft Champions ranked championship game. So, that will be the backdrop for this video. Enjoy the gameplay and whatnot. And here we go with a little wrap up of the NFL draft. The draft has come and gone, and they just dragged this thing out and milk it for everything it's worth as far as TV goes. I watched the first round on TV and just pretty much kept myself up to date on what was going on you know, over the internet. I'm not going to watch the NFL draft the entire damn weekend. That ain't going to happen. But anyway, let's get my Jets out of the way. We'll start with my J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Everyone making a big, you know, to-do about Christian Hackenberg being uh, picked from the second round. And I don't have a big deal with that. Or I'll make a big deal over it as far as him being picked in the second round. Um, talking about a mid-second round pick. So he was probably picked, what, in the high 30s? Maybe the low 40s? Let me, actually, let me pull it up right now. He was picked at number 51, so that's not a big deal. If he was picked in the first round or high second round, I'd be I'd be very annoyed if he was picked in the first round. High second round, mildly peeved, but, you know, pick number 51, not a big deal. What that tells me is that they believe that the freshman Christian Hackenberg is closer to the real deal than what we saw the rest of his career, and they put most of the blame on the coaching and the... Um, lack of town around him. That's what that tells me. Kind of like Jay Cutler when he came out of Vanderbilt. You know, Jay Cutler, his stats coming out of Vanderbilt was horrible. He got his tail kicked every single week. But, you know, people didn't hold that against him. And Jay Cutler was like, what, the 15th pick in the draft? Top 10, top 15, somewhere around there. Not saying that, you know, Hack will be as good as Jay Cutler. And as much as we bag on Jay Cutler, Jay Cutler makes plays. So, you know, we'll see. One thing I can guarantee you, though, is that the Jets are not going to go to camp with Hack, Geno Smith, and Bryce Petty. That ain't going to happen. That can't happen. So, I expect Fitzpatrick to be back, and, you know, um, that's going to leave Geno Smith or Bryce Petty off the roster. I don't think they're going to carry four quarterbacks. I would have liked to have seen a corner somewhere in the first two rounds, personally. Would have loved the kid from Houston. William Jackson III, who, um, since he picked <laughs> right before Pittsburgh. That's the, that was the guy Pittsburgh wanted. I would have loved to have had him, but the Jets also needed an outside backer, so I didn't really have a problem with, um, what's his name? Darren Lee in the first round. He's a hybrid. Well, he played in a 4-3. He was a Will um, outside backer in a 4-3. He's very fast. He can cover. He can kind of play a hybrid between um, Demario Davis's Jack linebacker spot in the 3-4 inside and provide some pass rush from the outside as well. He's got some versatility as far as that's concerned. Jets haven't had a good edge rushing linebacker since since Mo Lewis, really. And they also picked up a pass rushing outside backer who actually played in the 3-4, Justin Burris from, um, <coughs> excuse me, from Georgia. So... I was content, not thrilled, not disappointed, but I was middle of the road. I was content. We'll see how they play out. I'll give you a couple of drafts that I really liked and a couple that kind of um, left me scratching my head a little bit. And some of my favorite picks are some of my head scratching picks. Love the Jags draft. I think the Jags had the best draft this year by a mile. I mean, again, we don't know how all these players are going to pan out, but even if half of them become useful players that's going to give them a lot of speed and athleticism on defense if you can get a guy like Jalen Ramsey Miles Jack if his knee holds up Sheldon Day at a Notre Dame a guy with a major motor he's a lot like Stefan to it as far as size and skill set goes you know they're basically trying to clone what um gus bradley ran in seattle and they've done a good job this offseason adding a lot of pieces and it's really time it's time for the jags to push for a playoff spot and they had just a wonderful draft loved the titans draft loved the brownies draft no coincidence that i loved three teams that 
made trades to get, well, two of the teams made the trades to get a boatload of picks, and the Jags made um, a lot of very, you know, good picks in my opinion. But, you know, Cleveland and Tennessee, they got a haul of players, and Cleveland especially got a lot of, you know, young athletic talent may have more done it picking the wide receivers it picked them like four or five wide receivers but overall i thought we did a good job they added a lot of guys who are just flat out athletes corey coleman great athlete ricardo lewis great athlete scoby wright high motor guy a couple of real solid defensive line prospects also i think they did a good job of getting the type of athletes that they need at you know pretty important positions Titans, same deal. Added a lot of good-looking, young, athletic prospects. Just a matter of how they pan out. But, you know, the more you have, the more you stockpile, the greater chance that a few of them pan out. Titans, they got one of the better offensive linemen prospects in the entire draft. Marietta got beaten up a little bit. Would have liked to have seen them get a receiver earlier. You know, get Marcus a good, young, dynamic receiving prospect that he can grow with, that can grow together. Derrick Henry, I think he'll be okay. I don't think he's going to be Trent Richardson. I think he's going to be more along the lines of, remember remember Brandon Jacobs? You know, that kind of big, bruising, uh, physical bag that's more athletic than people give him credit for? I think he's going to be closer to that as opposed to a guy who... As opposed to a guy that flames out of the league. I don't think he's going to be a superstar by any stretch, but I think he'll be a solid back. But that's really all you really need. You need to find um, two or three solid backs that can, um, you know, hold it down for you. I really like this Redskins and the, the um, Texans draft. Josh Doxson, really good receiving prospect. I like Kendall Fuller out of Va Tech. He got hurt early on, but Kendall Fuller, prior to um, going down with his knee injury early in the season, in the beginning of the year, if you remember, he was uh, projected to be one of the top handful of DBs in the country, an uh, all-American caliber corner. He just ended up getting hurt shortly after that Ohio State game. And Keith Marshall, he can be a good um, third down type of back, a Deion Lewis type out of the backfield. Texans, Texans, all in on offense for the most part in their draft. They go with my uh, Golden Domers, Will Fuller, and Nick Martin. Will Fuller, I've been saying this for a while if you've been following me on Twitter. Mike Wallace clone. Same exact type of receiver. Not quite as fast as Mike Wallace in his prime. Mike Wallace in his prime was one of the fastest guys in the entire league. Will Fuller's not quite that fast, but plenty of fast enough to stretch the field. And. You know, Notre Dame under BK has developed a reputation of developing wide receivers, Golden Tate, Michael Floyd, for example, and churning out good linemen. Braxton Miller has a chance to be a good slot receiver. ESPN was making jokes about how the Texans must be trying to bring back the run and shoot. That would make me happy. But, yeah, I think they gave their offense a chance to have a good shot in the arm. I thought that Miami had a decent draft also, despite the Jeremy Tunsil weirdness. <laughs> I mean, that was just a complete circus. I thought they had a pretty solid draft, too. Dallas going with Ezekiel Elliott at number four. I think in the short term, they'll be fine with that. I mean, Dallas is, Dallas is a team that was picking in a, in that high because Romo got hurt, and they dealt with a slew of injuries outside of that as well. I mean, so many guys miss time. Romo missed time. Dez missed time. It's not your typical fourth pick in the draft team. They have an offense that's built, so I kind of get it. I just think that down the road, they're going to regret not picking a guy like, say, Jalen Ramsey and going with the back. But I think, you know, in an offense that's already built, he'll do very well. I thought Pittsburgh's draft was kind of meh. The Bengals straight up gave them the middle finger. They, they took the guy that they that the Pittsburgh wanted, and they had to settle for um, a corner, the kid from Miami, who's a little bit rough. He's a better athlete than a football player at this point. He just needs more seasoning. But um, I think the Bengals taking uh, Jackson really hurt them. The Bucks 
draft was a little bit weird. I like Hargreaves. People make a big deal about him being short, but he's super athletic. The guy's got a 40-inch vertical lead. I think he'll be fine. But then trading up to get a kicker, I thought that was kind of bizarre. When they're going to get Gerald McCoy, some help on the defensive line is anyone's guess. You know, so who knows how that'll pan out. I'll also give Dallas some um, brownie points for taking Jalen Smith in the second round. If his knee ever gets anywhere close to back, you know, that's a good pick for them in the second round. But Jalen has a long way to go. A long, long way to go. Hopefully he can make it back. I thought Philly's draft outside of Wentz is a little bit weird. Same thing with the Niners outside of Forrest Buckner, a little bit weird. I love Joey Bosa. The only thing that worries me is how he fits in a 3-4 multiple scheme. I don't think he's the type of guy who you want standing up playing a hybrid outside backer um, pass rushing position. And... He may need to bulk up some to play 3-4 defensive end, but in sub packages where he's playing in a four-man down line or playing situationally as a um, speed three technique in a um, sub package nickel or dime, I think he'd be great at that. But holding up in a 3-4, I don't know. I think he's a pure 4-3 defensive end. And I just get kind of nervous when you ask guys to do things that are outside of their realm and outside of their skill set. Um, so that bears watching, but otherwise, you know, I'm a big fan of him. I also like the Giants draft. I was hoping one of the corners, Eli Apple or Vernon Hargreaves, would fall to the Jets. Um, neither did. Um, I liked Hargreaves better than Apple, but Eli Apple's a good player. He's got plenty of experience playing uh, press man as well as press bail out of zone, which I like. Um, so that's going to help him a lot. Uh, I think he's going to do just fine. Sterling Shepard out of Oklahoma. Under the radar wide receiver. Oklahoma wide receivers tend to fall under the radar, but, you know, solid guy for them in case um, Victor Cruz um, continues to struggle, and they need someone to replace the piece of garbage Ruben Randall. He can uh, potentially do that for them. I thought the Raiders did well. I thought the um, Vikings did decent. I think uh, Laquan Treadwell fits very well with the way North Turner likes to play offense. He doesn't have to have the greatest deep speed in the face of the earth. He has to be a big body physical receiver that can shield defenders and um, catch those um, intermediate square in skinny posts, those 50-50 balls downfield, and just give Teddy another target to throw to us. How does Stefan Diggs and Kyle Rudolph? I think that will help him out a great deal. So um, that's pretty much my thoughts on the NFL draft. Some players I liked, some drafts I liked, some stuff that I found kind of weird and dicey, and we'll just see how it all plays out. That's the fun of it. You will know three or four years from now, you know, just how good these draft picks were. So, love to hear your guys' thoughts. Hope you guys enjoy, and I will talk to y'all later. Peace.